Today we're going to put together a testosterone boosting workout based on the results of a study. But first, we have to ask ourselves what are we looking for? An immediate post-workout boost in testosterone or a permanent increase in our resting T levels? I looked at three different studies and decided on using the one that provided the most complete picture of the changes that happen in our bodies hormonally from 10 weeks of consistent exercise. Testing hormone levels pre and post-workout but also comparing our basal or resting levels to see if they improved. This is what we want, to improve our hormone profile at rest, not just a temporary spike post-workout. I like the program, and it's different from anything I've presented on the channel, although the results weren't exactly what I expected, and it's an area that could use a lot more research. There are two groups in this study. One had an average age of 30. We'll call this the young group, with the oldest one being 35. The older group had an average age of 62, the youngest being 59. So a lot of us are somewhere between these two groups. However, I'm quite a bit closer to the older group. These test subjects weren't weight training previously, but all were in good shape, being physically active, doing recreational sports and jogging. They weren't overweight, with the older group averaging 20% body fat, about 2% more than the young ones. They were already reasonably fit, healthy, and didn't suffer from low testosterone. This impacted the results, but before we get to that, let's go over why you clicked on the video. The workout. It was a full body periodized training program that was done three times a week. Monday was a strength day, using a weight that had them doing three to five reps to failure, allowing two to three minutes between sets for recovery. Wednesday, the sets were done using eight to 10 reps, again using a weight that brought them to failure in this range. The rest between sets was reduced to a minute. On Friday, the repetitions were performed explosively in the 6 to 8 range, using a lighter weight that would have brought them to failure between 12 and 15 reps, with 1 to 2 minutes rest between sets. The exercises used, starting with the compound movements, were squats, lat pulldowns, bench press, seated rows and military presses. For isolation exercises, they did leg extensions and curls, calf raises and arm curls. A nice mix of exercises here. We can't add much more, the workouts will get too long. I'd probably take out the calf raises and add in a tricep exercise, but anyone with weak calves would disagree with me, I'm sure. Now for the results. To test strength, they used one rep squat max. Both groups gained strength, and the researchers considered the strength gains to be similar. They used an MRI to find the cross-sectional area of the thigh muscles to determine hypertrophy. I like that they're using leg muscle size as a determining factor. Because in another study I read, they found that regardless of age, the more muscular a man's legs were, the higher his testosterone was. And this study gives us a look into what comes first, leg gains or higher testosterone. Both groups had muscle growth in their legs, with the younger group adding the most. To determine hormonal changes, they tested for both total and free testosterone. Free testosterone is what our body uses. In addition to T levels, they checked cortisol, growth hormone, lactate, ACTH, which is a hormone that stimulates production of cortisol, IGF-1, and an IGF-1 binding protein 3. Of all these tests, the two that changed the most and positively impact the test subjects were free testosterone in the 30-year-old men and cortisol in the 60-year-old group. Total testosterone didn't change in both groups, but the amount of usable or free T increased significantly in the 30-year-old group. Remember the study that found more leg muscle equaled higher testosterone levels? In this case, the older group's leg size increased without increasing total or free T levels. This leads me to the hypothesis, in healthy older men, building more muscle comes first before any improvements in testosterone. Their hormone profile did improve though, creating a more anabolic environment by reducing resting cortisol, which is a catabolic hormone. It inhibits muscle growth and can even cause muscle breakdown, so the less the better. The researchers hypothesize it's possible over a longer period, older men would continue to adapt hormonally, as training brought about more changes in muscle size, strength, and functional abilities. But of course, more studies are needed. This study didn't include diet, which is an essential piece of the puzzle. To find out how losing excess belly fat increases testosterone levels naturally, watch this video next, and keep working out while having fun. This is Lawrence from Fit and 50. We'll talk to you again in the next one.